Hi there, web weavers, and welcome to Web Weaver Explains. Today's episode is for all the girls out there. Because we're diving into something you probably see every day, maybe even use yourself. Lipstick. Yup, that tiny tube in your bag holds a whole world of science, beauty, and history. So, let's break it all down in under five minutes. Let's go! Okay, but like, what even is lipstick? Well, at its core, lipstick is basically a smooth blend of waxes, oils, and pigments. That's what gives it its shape, texture, and color. But modern lipsticks often come with a little extra sparkle. Things like fragrance to make it smell cute, vitamin E to keep your lips soft and nourished, and sometimes even SPF, which is built-in sun protection. Because yes, your lips can get sunburned too. Okay, but like, how does all that stuff actually become lipstick? Well, it starts in a cosmetics lab or factory. First, they melt down special waxes, like beeswax or plant-based candelilla wax. That's what gives lipstick its solid shape. Then, they mix in oils, like castor oil, super shiny, or cocoa butter, super creamy, to help it glide on smoothly. After that, they toss in the pigments, those are the colorful powders that bring your favorite shades to life. Once it's all melted and blended into a smooth, colorful liquid, they pour it into lipstick molds, let it cool down until it's solid, and ta-da! They pop it out, twist it into those little tubes, and boom! It's ready to go on your lips. Yep, every tube of lipstick starts out like melted rainbow goo in a sciency kitchen. Kinda cool, right? Speaking of color, let's throw it way back, like ancient history back. People have been coloring their lips for thousands of years. Cleopatra, for example, was known to rock red lips in ancient Egypt. She used a mix of pigments, including one called carmine. What's carmine, you ask? Okay, this is kinda weird, but also kinda awesome. Carmine is a deep red pigment made from tiny insects called cochineal bugs. They dry the bugs, grind them into powder, and boom, bright red lips. It sounds gross, but it was totally normal back then. And hey, it looked amazing. But lipstick wasn't always glam though. In the Middle Ages, red lips were seen as a sign of wickedness or vanity. But then, during the 20th century, especially in the 1920s, lipstick became a symbol of confidence, rebellion, and fashion. And here is a fact I bet you didn't know. In World War II, makeup companies kept producing lipstick even when resources were low because it boosted women's morale. Red lips were considered patriotic. And what about modern lipsticks? Today, you've got creamy, matte, glossy, longwear, tinted balm, even vegan and organic options. You can also check labels to see if they're cruelty-free or eco-conscious. And science keeps improving it, like using silicone to make it smudge resistant, or using hydrating tech so your lips don't dry out. And the color trends? Red will always be classic, thank you Marilyn Monroe, but pinks, browns, bold purples, and even blues have made waves. Oh, and don't forget the nude shades that match your natural lips for that effortless look. Okay, so why does this even matter? Because here's the thing, lipstick isn't about looking perfect and it's definitely not something you have to wear. Some girls love it, some never touch it, and both are totally valid. Real beauty, that comes from kindness and being true to yourself. Lipstick is just one way to express who you are. Whether you're rocking a bold red, a soft pink, or no color at all, you're already beautiful just the way you are. So tell me, what's your go-to lip color? Do you have a favorite brand or shade, or are you more of a lip balm kind of girl? Let's chat in the comments. I wanna know. And if you liked this mini deep dive, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to Web Weaver Explains. More quick, fun, and science meet style videos are coming your way, especially made for you. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.